Joining us live right now is News Nation legal analyst and criminal trial attorney Sarah Azari. Sarah, thanks so much for coming on. Good to see you. To be with you. Happy Easter. Uh, reviewing some of these details again, tough. Jury selection begins tomorrow with such a noteworthy uh, case here. Walk us through what we expect and what will Daybell's defense attorney be looking for in jurors? Is there a strategy to this process? Yeah, there's absolutely a strategy, and it's very nuanced because it's a death penalty case. There's always a dichotomy, Natasha, between the guilt phase and the penalty phase. And the evidence here is far more overwhelming against Chad than it was against Lori. It's almost direct, even though it's circumstantial. And so I don't think that he has much of a chance um, in arguing guilt. And I think what the defense needs to do is focus on maintaining their credibility and save those major arguments for the uh, penalty phase. Um, in, in these cases, in death penalty penalty cases, I think uh, the defense counsel is typically looking for jurors who have witnessed or experienced trauma, either in their own personal lives or even sitting as jurors previously. And to be qualified to sit on a death penalty jury, um, you have to be able to impose the death penalty. But at least if they've experienced trauma, they're less likely um, to be inclined to, to actually impose it. So, you know, typically we're looking for people with social science backgrounds, not hard science backgrounds like engineers and technology, you know, people in technology. Um, those are sort of the strategies that we typically use in death penalty jury selection. Yeah, I appreciate that context. And as you mentioned, it is a death penalty jury we'll be looking at. Uh, the doomsday mom, Lori Vallow, did not receive the death penalty. But the death penalty is still a possibility for Chad Daybell. Why is that? And tell us about the likelihood that you're uh, seeing at this point. Well, the simple answer is sanctions. Um, the reason, I mean, the, the state uh, sought the death penalty, as you said, against both Lori and Chad. The reason it came off the table for Lori was because uh, the state had not complied with their disco discovery obligations. So because of the delay, it was like a snooze, you, you snooze, you lose kind of thing that the court said, you know, you, you lost your chance. You're not going to be able to proceed with the death penalty. That's why uh, Lori was spared the death penalty. But so for Chad, um, it's absolutely going to go forward. And you have to think also, Natasha, you had the co-conspirator, the brother of Lori, who is now dead, and you've got Lori, who was spared the death penalty. So the state's absolutely going for the jugular here. And I think they have the factors. I think that, you know, Chad's participation in these murders is very aggravating, and it's it, it definitely amounts to special circumstances. And Lori Vallow seemed very careful when talking about Daybell at her trial. Do you think that we will see Lori Vallow testify at Daybell's trial? You know, she definitely controlled her defense, it was obvious, and she continues to worship Chad Daybell. Um, I'm sure that she's willing to take the stand, but she does have an appeal that's pending. She also has a trial in Arizona for very similar charge involving her ex-husband that's also pending. So it's not a good idea for her to make any statements, let alone under oath at trial. Um, but, you know, she's also unlikely to offer anything that's going to move the needle for Chad Daybell. She is a very difficult witness to control. She is kind of wacky and um, she's risky. And so I'm not sure if it's even good strategy to, to, to want her to testify if she has something to offer. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.